What's up guys, Zobber and I here, your Tekken Games Crusader, and we're finally back. And what I have here is the successor to what I've been using for my development purposes on Android and testing for the last year and a half, which is the AYN Odin Pro. And this is probably the most versatile as well as the best implementation for Android gaming without having to touch the screen where that you can implement for the uh, mapping to inputs on the screen to the physical controls. So you can see, you know, I've done some modifications on here. These are treads made for uh, Switch Lite or Xbox and I've got my magnetic semiconductor cooler mount on here so that it can be able to add some additional cooling. And the reason it's here instead of anywhere else is because battery is uh, going to heat this device up a lot quicker than the SOC. So this had a 6600 milliamp per hour battery with a Snapdragon 845 which is the same um, SOC as the uh, Razer Phone 2. And you can see here, still the best D-pad of any device for portable use. And I've got uh, Hall Effect sensors in here from Elect Gear. And they are for uh, the Switch light instead of using Joy-Con version. And then I've got the uh, Skull & Co caps on here for the Joy-Cons because they fit tighter than the ones for the uh, Switch Lite. The reason I'm using the ones for the uh, Switch Lite is they're a little bit taller and they provide a uh, better surface for grip overall. Whenever, you know, I don't I can't use them as they are because they're so they're still, you know, not tall enough for I have larger hands. So I have these uh, dual shock or excuse me dual sense um, toppers on here to grip the uh, Skull and Co uh, extended caps for a little bit easier reach, and it has a, a TPU rubber-like coating on the top of it and yeah this thing with the dock is probably the best best implementation that you can use for a console-like experience of mobile games you know i love how everything was just very simple laid out you hide your micro hdmi which does 1080p 60 You've got your TF card or transfer card for micro SD here. You have a, a wide vent on here with a good sized opening. The only thing is, you can see that they filtered the exhaust with a uh, a metal mesh over top of it. So a decent size intake. It's around the size of the fan. You've got these two extra buttons here. Now, the speakers on this, they're really good. They're just not very, very loud because what the issue was with these speakers is after a redesign, they became downward firing ported speakers. So they have a, a good size port for resonance chamber to be able to give a more accurate sound signature. And as you can see, I've got the uh, crystal shell uh, protector on here and I do as well for what's in this box and I was an original super pack backer so the dock is currently still in storage but it had 2.5 inch SSD capabilities on the back of it and you could do 4k 60 output non HDR from the bottom of the USB Type-C port on the handheld. So, that leads us into what this is. This is the shipping box. 
for the Odin 2 Max. And what do you get with the Max? Well, first off, here is the updated, this is a silicone version of the skin. I was hoping it was still a crystal version. We'll look at that in a bit. We have the case for the Odin 2. And as you can see, it's still Tom Talk, just like this is. But they went a little bit further in to give it this actual molded EVA foam exterior for the shape protection to be a little bit slimmer profile, as you can see. Case is around the same size. It's just thinner where it can be. So, leading us on down here, we have US power adapter. We have a massive. Hundred watts. So the one that came with this in the super pack, it had a 65. That was a beefy cylinder, and then it had a standard 35. So this can do PD 65 watt fast charging. We got five amps at 20 volts, three amps at 15 volts. 3 amps at 12 volts, 3 amps at 9 volts, and 3 amps at 5 volts. It's just a, uh, there's no branding on it or anything, but it does feel nice. And it feels like the resin exterior casing of the original Odin Pro. Let's go ahead, proceed here. That's the bag that that came in. And here we have the star of the show. The AYN Odin 2 Max. So what do you get with the Max over the Pro? So the Pro, you had 8 gigabytes of LPDDR4X, which was roughly 3800 megahertz on the speed of the ram <clears throat> what this could do is net you about 18 percent more performance in high performance mode over devices that had the snapdragon 845 so like the razor phone 2 you know it could go clocked up on the gpu side to around 553 megahertz before it would get really, really hot and it would downclock itself. This could go up to 856 megahertz at the highest of what I tested it at. Well, this, I mean, just to give you the, uh, the lowdown on the thickness of the packaging in the box, I don't have my box currently out of storage for the Odin Pro, but it was a black box and it had gold leaf writing or uh, imprint uh, text on the box with the Odin logo in the center. And it was a nice package. It was a very nice package. It was all sealed up and everything. This one is not sealed. There's a reason for that. And I'm going to get to that whenever we go over... <clears throat> what I actually got. So the reason this is sent early to me is so I can be able to get some certification testing done where the, I am an Android developer and this is what has been my go-to for Android app development testing and verification purposes with Google to where it actually gets control support 
for this device and this family platform of device for the Odin Pro and Odin Lite. So what I'm hoping to be able to get done is in short time get verification process done for the Odin Pro or excuse me the Odin 2 platform family which is you got the base which is 8 gigs of LPDDR5X RAM and we'll test the speed of that to give you all the proper esti estimations of what it can run up to whenever I do some testing on it. And then in the Pro of the Odin 2, you have 12 gigs of LPDDR5X uh, RAM. Now, this is the original Odin Pro had 128 gigs of UHS 1.0 storage and that's embedded memory card or embedded they call it EMMC embedded multimedia card storage this is the base has 128 gigs the Pro has 256 gigs, which was an upgrade you could get for $40 onto the original Pro. And the Max has 512 gigs, which is what this is and the reason I got this. I don't like using memory cards in Android testing because there's some sort of a verification error that always occurs whenever I try and sideload things from the website rather than doing it directly through my developer portal on Google Play. So, the reason that's impressive is this is using the same speed of storage that's actual, um, in, not in NVMe, but it is a, a faster storage medium in UHS 4.0. And the only device that I've seen so far that uses UHS 4.0 is the ROG Ally. Maybe the Steam Deck OLED. We don't know because we haven't seen a full specs list of everything that they've changed or updated on it. So we'll go from there. So the biggest reason that this is very appealing to me, like I said, I can do... Android development testing without having to ever touch a memory card. I did get the dock though, and the reason I got the dock is because with the original Odin Pro, having the ability to run an SSD 8 terabyte drive directly on there and transfer it as seen as an internal but extra storage was fantastic. So this dock has changed. It's not yet out. It is NVMe M.2 format for the dock. So the dock is smaller. It no longer has the N64 and GameCube ports on it. But it does still have a bevy of USB 3.0. And you still have your support for HDMI and DisplayPort out. And Ethernet. Having Ethernet on a dock for an Android device that you're doing testing with makes making changes to the applications and getting it verified to go through and be updated on the device itself so much faster. You're talking about cutting down two to three hours. So let's go ahead, look around this. The only thing we have on here, you can see model information. So, this was nothing to write home or about in the general census of, you know, mobile phone support of connections and everything. It had Bluetooth 5 and it had Wi-Fi AC, so 5. It was dual band you know, it, it worked. It was functional. This is using the latest Bluetooth 
So you have LD3 or LDAC3 codec support from Sony. And you also have Wi-Fi 7. And there's barely any options out right now that are in a consumer grade support price range that is acceptable for Wi-Fi 7. I'm doing some testing on some devices so I can be able to test the speed of Wi-Fi 7 on my fiber. But as it is right now, this is as cutting edge as you can get for the hardware in this for probably the next three to five years. I'll be able to get use out of this for development support and it still gets support as long as AYN updates Android to be within two revisions of the current available. This being on Android 10 and then having to do modifications to get it to run Android 11 in a custom uh, scenario and then having to pull driver information out for the light to get the compatibility I could for the devices that are in it and components that's where it's been some hoops jumping for me in the last eight months the other thing is this whenever it was on um, crowdfunding the, at uh, last or summer before last it was advertised as going to get Windows support over ARM so they called it Project Valhalla I mean, going along with all the Nordic um, specifics and everything. So, that is supposed to ramp up somewhere in Q1 to Q2 of 2024. What that will probably be able to give us is the ability to, on this as well as on this, get Snapdragon drivers and Windows 11 enabled. Why not Windows 10? Well, because Vulkan works better on Windows 11. And that's what most of the back end, the APIs are going to be utilizing for mobile games. Over uh, DX11 or 12. Because you don't have support for the components in this within Microsoft's stack. Because this is not designed or specified as a Windows device. You can um, sideload or dual boot onto it. I'm going to say with some specifics as to being able to get things functional may not be the smoothest. I mean Currently, I believe they're still working on getting a Linux kernel to be able to work on it. So, that's just a community thing. That's not an official thing. So, your knowledge may vary and do so at your own risk. So, let's go ahead and talk about the uh, SOC that's in this device and why it's so special. For the pricing that starts at... Whenever it was crowdfunded, you had a uh, support level where if you did the backing on this, you got a super backer level discount. That's what I did on this. All of this stuff combined, plus the dock, cost me just $408. So, here's why that's special. The handheld itself... After the crowdfunding, this is $460. The handheld itself for the Pro, after all the crowdfunding, is $370. And the base is $299. So, this originally, whenever I get crowd, crowdfunding on the Super Backer Pack, was 260 or no 270 dollars with the super dock 
and all the accessories that I got. So this price on this device has dropped down to $200 since this got officially released and supported on AYN's website now for purchase. There's currently a very short demand for pre-orders. So if you order, you're going to get your order. I mean, they're rushing out about 200 shipments a day. And you would probably get it within two to two and a half, maybe three weeks. With the time allotted for your customs check and being able to get into the country and everything and i would say if you're trying to save money on this for shipping don't 4px can take up to a month with customs verification going a lot slower in the process whereas dhl this will arrive within a week in most places within the world so it's worth the extra little bit of money to get that done. So what makes this SOC so special? It is the latest Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. And this is a 4 nanometer SOC. The reason it's so special is all Snapdragon SOCs until this released were uh, dual channel or single channel memory sorry this is a the first dual channel lpddr5 or an lp in this situation is low profile dr5x memory controller so the io on this is going to be just from comparing in a single channel to a dual channel enabled version of the same chip then you're looking at roughly an extra 28 percent performance just from having dual channel ram it's almost in the same situation of you know doing a single channel or a single stick of ram on a current AMD Ryzen processor for what's rated for a CPU rather than just doing what the JDEC spec of your overclocking profile is defaults to for AMD Expo. So you also will gain a little bit better stability in maintaining higher clocks and lower voltage overall because you don't have to run the RAM as high to get the same performance in dual channel as you do in single channel. Whenever I've done testing on this and then I got the uh, my phone here is the uh, Sony Xperia 4 or the Xperia 1 Mark 4. So it has the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. And this phone gets really, really hot because the memory controller on it, as well as the chip, they're running out the wazoo. And there's no cooling on this other than it's got a glass back on it. That's this phone. And it, they have a gaming edition, which is like $100 extra for a dock cooler that just runs fans over the back of the phone. So, getting out of all of this backstory and everything, what makes this so special? Well, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, it has an AI core control on it. The same way as the XR2 chips do in the VR headsets is the Quest 2 and the Quest 3 and Quest Pro. The uh, biggest reason that... That's important is it's the first of any of the Snapdragon handsets or chips or SOC system on a chip that supports ray tracing. 
in a hardware level on the GPU cores you're looking at around 2 1.6 to 2 teraflops is what it can do balls to the wall by regulation of Android you can't do that but in Android testing in a developer scenario you can you can run things higher you can get more performance out because you have to regulate what it can do to a maintain performance output. And I like the AYN Odin series because they give you that ability to give active fan use. You can do quiet mode. You can be able to do your performance or sport mode, which is your high um, fan level but they still don't give you the access to just set the fan to full tilt to do 100% all the time. I wish that would come in an update, but so far there's not been anything on that because as with every single Android handheld that comes out, you have the, I call it the scourge of the reason that people buy these is for the purpose of emulation I'm a collector, I don't care about emulation so much. The only reason that emulation is even an appealing situation at all is because it does push new hardware revisions and updates for support of things into Android platform. I mean, as it is right now, I've done some checking on the analytics and metrics on Google Play and every single Android user out there, around 47% of them do some sort of gaming or emulation on their phone. It's not in division of specifics to a, uh, an amount of what of each, but that's still a good amount of people that are going to buy this just for emulation. I would say you're looking at around 88% of people would buy this just for that. I'm buying it for the purpose of testing Android games, developing and getting verification for Android platform of Google Play. And basically, I will test a couple of things to show other people as far as emulation goes. I've never been really huge into emulation. I know a lot about it. But that's not me saying I am into it or I support it or anything like that. You know, you determine what you want to do with the device. You are the consumer. Just make sure in the case of what you're doing, it's either legal or you aren't morally affected by it. That's all I have to say about that. I mean... Emulation has always been a gray area topic for the entire industry of electronics for the purpose of you have the argument of access to games that you don't own or normally wouldn't see or play versus preservation of platforms you can no longer purchase for. So, with all of that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into this. All right, no padding inside of that part of the box. We have here our screen protector. It is tempered glass. I don't think it's 2.5D corners. But it is really thin. I would say it's about a $5 uh, value of the screen protector. Let's go ahead and get this out. And normally the cable would be there. 
So this is just a uh, not recyclable, but it's got like this uh, felt material here. So it's soft to uh, even on the outsides here, but the bottom side, you can see it's just the shiny plastic. And all that we have in here is our power cable. Wish this was white. And this is a power slash data cable. We do have aluminum heads on it. And it does have a Velcro wrap strip around it. As you can see, it's not keyed, so it is a higher quality. I would say it's either USB 2 or USB 3. Here's where I would have put that, were it me. I mean, I don't see what the purpose of having this opening in here would be otherwise. And let's go around this. We have the same D-pad style. I like the white because it's all white. Unlike this, this was called the Panda White. The, uh, the sticks on here are maybe... go with about one and a half millimeters taller still have the uh, rings on here or this is just a diffuser to let the LED through and instead of the loops on the sides now you just have a diffuser bar so it gives a little bit more rigidity buttons feel a little bit smaller than they were on the original Odin Pro. You no longer have your branding right here for the Odin logo. You just have this AYM branding on the back. So, here's an improvement. You can already see a huge vented area for your intake. And an improvement on the exhaust is it's no longer filtered and it's a wider opening but the actual amount width of venting for exhaust isn't as wide so they no longer have covered up your micro HDMI they only have covered up your micro USB or sorry micro SD card slot the difference from this is I had to put in Hall Effect joysticks on this this comes with Hall Effect joysticks very nice layout for the uh, shoulders and just like this had Hall Effect shoulder triggers or analog buttons for your L2 and R2 or ZL, ZR or LTRT 
these also are. You have a little bit longer throw range. The uh, M buttons or macro buttons, they're a little bit lower profile. So I don't know if with the with the skin on, is it going to still be easy to register around? So the uh, button here on the Odin 2, this is your power button. It's also a fingerprint sensor. Volume rocker. Feels a little bit uh, receded, more so than it was on the original Odin. You have a much more embellished grip to it. And the handheld overall feels a little bit thicker. The R3, L3 clicks feel a lot more satisfying or a little bit louder. X button here feels like it was a little bit... Oh, here's something. It's a uh, Easter egg. This displays the actual size. So, yeah. That's the actual size of what it shows on the top here. The biggest improvement to me on this is the front firing dual chamber ported speakers. How can you tell if it's a dual fire or a, um, a ported a dual ported speaker or dual chamber speaker? If it was a single chamber speaker, there would only just be one little opening like this, or a little hole for it to come out. For it to have this many vents, that in and of itself, from the original Odin, each vent is about half as wide as the port. That was on the original Odin. So stacking two side by side and then two width gives you the size of the port. Well, two side by side and break one and a half and extend it side by side. And that's what it was, the width on the original Odin Pro. It'd be like that much. This having two extra this is going to be a louder speaker. It's going to project more, and it's going to give a better separation for your audio. I like just being able to set it down like that on top of the actual image while I show you the other to compare. So, see what I mean? Actually, no, it's about a full two width and full two length. So you have one extra, which is a half extra, which is still perfectly fine. You can see the thickness of the Odin 2 is a little bit thicker or about the same thickness as with this crystal shell, protective shell on the Odin Pro. You can see the difference in the uh, grip size is much more substantial. And this is why I was talking about, see the width on the uh, openings here? They're a little bit wider and they're a lot deeper with less material in between but it's not as long so it does translate out to about the same amount in that difference this Odin 2 is a little bit larger than the original Odin Pro as well but they have the same exact screen size The uh, main reason that I use this 
and I will be using this for Android development is it has AOSP actual OS support so you can choose the Odin launcher which is like a console large icon experience but for the purpose of Android development you can't use anything other than AOSP which is as vanilla as Android gets and you have to have full option menu you have to have full options range and the biggest thing is you have to have the ability to go in and be able to change or add or customize any option. Let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, Pimax portal here. This is the QLED device, 256 gigs. It's around the same amount width. Let's just do it over this. I mean, since this is basically our guide, we can see there's a little bit more roundedness, of course, in the Odin. This is a 5.48 inch display. It's 4K, so 3840 by 2160, whereas this is 1080p and it's completely serviceable. But this is a 6-inch display. The reason I also went with white is I hate bezels. I hate them with a passion. Having white version, you can see it's a white bezel. So the only part you're going to see on the screen is what's in the actual display so you have no black borders or anything going around it pricing of this device which is an XR2 it also has the AI core has the core layout is essentially a Snapdragon 860 but they added the feature for being able to have one of your slower cores half its speed whenever it's not in use and be used in the capacity for use for AI. And what this is for is for checking or helping heal for uh, stuck pixels on display. I don't think we're going to see anything like that with this. But, yeah, this is uh, just an overview of comparisons for the original Odin Pro to the Odin 2 Max. And my next video will go over the ability to see how the accessories fit and everything and functionality of the device and we'll go from there I know a lot of people aren't going to enjoy this uh, deep dive into the comparisons of it and the specs and the technicalities of everything but you know this is my specialty it's what I, I can do I do have uh, mental and capabilities with certain things of focus and uh, cognitive um, things from health conditions and stuff so I hope you guys enjoyed if you did you know feel free to give a thumbs up on the video if you didn't you know, I mean leave a comment you can air your grievances and everything I don't care I'm only going to respond to the ones that have questions that I can provide answers to and everyone else did just you know, be whatever you want to be on the internet. I'm here for information 
and providing for those who are interested in this device things that maybe other people have not even mentioned because they don't have the expertise and the ability to know the technical in views of the product but we'll leave it here guys this is Night, your Tekken Games Crusader. Hope you guys have a good night. Good day. Take care. Thanks for watching. We'll see you later.